Here, we will continue our discussion on common biochemical reactions. Redox reactions, which involves oxidation and reduction, are another major source of energy for cells. Redox is simply electron shuffling. The forces that accompany the movement of electrons can be optimized to do work. Oxidation reactions are coupled to reduction reactions. This is an important slide because this gives you a pretty good idea as to how a reducing agent and an oxidizing agent works. Now, if X were to be a reducing agent and Y were to be an oxidizing agent, what happens is that electron flows from X to Y because X is the one that reduces Y. Anything that reduces sends or gives electrons to the one that gets oxidized. Now, the points are X loses electrons and X gets oxidized by Y, becomes more positive. The oxidizing agent, which gets reduced, gains electrons, and now it is reduced by X and becomes more negative because it's gaining electrons. Biological oxidations are often dehydrogenations because protons typically move along with electrons. Here are some examples of oxidation reduction reactions. Reduced organic compounds serve as fuels from which electrons can be stripped off during oxidation. And that is exactly why fatty acids are a really good fuel because they are highly reduced right and they are alkanes well, alkanes is the most reduced whereas carbon dioxide is the most oxidized and all these functional group containing molecules are in between uh, carb carboxylic acid is more oxidized than aldehyde which is more oxidized than alcohol which is more oxidized than alkane biological systems use four mechanisms to transfer electrons. First, they can be directly transferred as electrons or as hydrogen atoms, as hydride ions, or through direct combination with oxygen. Reducing equivalents refer to the number of electrons transferred in a reaction, regardless of the method. Let us consider the reversible oxidation of a secondary alcohol to a ketone. Many biochemical oxidation reduction reactions involve transfer of two electrons. In order to keep charges in balance, proton transfer often accompanies electron transfer. Now let's get to our example. In many dehydrogenases, these are enzymes that reduces molecules. The reaction proceeds by a stepwise transfer of protons and hydride. The enzyme lactate hydrogenase converts lactate to pyruvate or the reverse, pyruvate to lactate. What it is doing when it is converting lactate to pyruvate is oxidizing lactate to pyruvate. Pyruvate is oxidized, as you can see it has a ketone, whereas lactate has an alcohol. The reverse process of converting pyruvate to lactate is a reduction. Now let us understand what reduction potential is. Reduction potential, E, is a measure of the affinity of the acceptor for electrons. This is similar to free energy. E 
zero is the standard reduction potential. And the units for this is volts. More positive A0 means more affinity for electrons. We calculate E via the Nernst equation, which is E equals E0 plus RT divided by NF, LN, concentration of acceptor divided by the concentration of donor. At 25 degrees Celsius, E is equal to E0 plus 0.026 volts divided by N, LN, concentration of acceptor divided by the concentration of donor. Shown here is a table, and this table shows the standard reduction potentials of some biologically important half reactions. The reduction potential E essentially measures the affinity for electrons. A higher E, as shown here, means a higher affinity. Electrons transfer from lower to higher E, which means that electrons from this reactions can travel to this reaction. So this is the most uh, uh, reduced and this is the most oxidized. And that's what this table means. Delta E relates to delta G. Delta E is given by E of the acceptor minus E of the donor. And delta G is directly related to delta E using this equation. Delta G is equal to minus NF delta E. And delta E can is also given by minus delta G divided by NF, where N is the number of electrons and F is the Faraday constant. Now, remember delta G is equal to minus RT ln K equilibrium. So, therefore, delta E, the term for delta E becomes minus delta G divided by NF, which is equal to RT divided by NF, ln K equilibrium. And hence, we have the Nernst equation. Let us consider the conversion of pyruvate to lactate. What is this reaction? Is this an oxidation or reduction? A quick look at it says that pyruvate is getting reduced to lactate, right? And lactate is getting oxidized to pyruvate by the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase. So before we understand and calculate the reduction potential for the lactate to pyruvate reactions. Let's look at the half reaction here. And the half reaction says that pyruvate going to lactate has a half, uh, uh, a, an E0 of minus 0.185. Using this information, we can say that pyruvate going to lactate has an E0 of minus 0.185 volts, whereas lactate going to pyruvate the reverse reaction has an E0 of 0.185 volts. It's just positive. So for the bolded reaction or the reduction reaction, pyruvate is reduced and, and is an electron acceptor in this case. For the reverse reaction, lactate going to pyruvate, lactate is oxidized and hence is an electron donor. Lactate and pyruvate needs a partner for a complete redox reaction because this is a redox half reaction. And that partner happens to be NAD plus because in converting lactate to pyruvate, NAD plus has a very big role to play here because pyruvate, uh, when reacted with NADH, gets converted to lactate and NAD plus. So what's happening is NADH is acting as a reducing agent and it gives electrons to pyruvate and gets converted to NAD+. At the same time, pyruvate, by accepting the electrons, get converted to lactate. And hence, pyruvate is reduced and NADH is oxidized in the reaction. For the reverse reaction, lactate, when treated with NAD plus, lactate gets oxidized and 
NAD in this case gets reduced. Now, if you look back at the table for the E0 value for conversion of NAD plus to NADH, it is minus 0.32 volts. And the reverse reaction is plus 0.32 volts. So for the bolded reaction, that is going from NADH to NAD plus, NADH is oxidized and is an electron donor because NADH has electrons and it actually donates electrons as hydride. For the reverse reaction, NAD plus is reduced and an electron acceptor. So the individual half reactions are shown here. Pyruvate goes to lactate. The E0 value is minus 0.185 volts. At the same time, NAD plus goes to NADH and the E0 value is 0.32. And pyruvate in this case is the electron acceptor and NADH is the electron donor. So how do you set this equation here to calculate delta E? Delta E is E0 acceptor minus E0 donor or E0 reduction reaction minus E0 oxidation reaction. Um, to make it less confusing, we'll just stick to E0 acceptor and donor because what you have to do is to identify what is the electron donor and what is the electron acceptor. In this case, it's easy because NADH is the electron donor and um, pyruvate is the electron acceptor. So what we essentially do is we plug in the values, that is minus 0.185, of the acceptor minus minus 0 0.320 volts that is equal to 0.135 volts that is the delta e for these two half reactions combining to one full reaction and using this value delta e zero that is plus 0.135 volts we plug into the nernst equation to find out what the standard free energy change is. That is delta G zero. That is equal to minus NF delta E zero. And you can see that the standard free energy change is minus 26.05 kilojoules per moles. And this reaction is thus favorable. So NAD and NADP are common redox cofactors. These are commonly called pyridine nucleotides they can dissociate from the enzyme after the reaction. In a typical biological oxidation reaction, hydride from alcohol is transferred to NAD+, giving NADH. So structurally, the difference between NAD and NADP is that in NAD, this is just a hydroxy, whereas in NAD+, this hydroxy is derivatized by a phosphate. But otherwise, the structure is very similar. You have the adenine ribose, which is attached to phosphate, two phosphates, in fact, to another ribose that is attached to a, a nicotinamide ring. This is called as a nicotinamide, and hence the name nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Now, this is NAD plus because it's a positive charge. And this nitrogen that is shown here is an electron sink because hydride transfer happens at this carbon here. When hydride attacks this carbon, you can actually move this bond uh, from here to here, and this, get, this bond can move here. And hence, you get this kind of a structure. And this is NADH because this is the reduced form. Now, the hydrogens, the reason why they are shown as a blue color or a pink color is because these hydrogens are up on a prochiral carbon. Because if you replace one of these hydrogens by um, a different group, this carbon becomes chiral, right? So the hydrogen that is coming, the new hydrogen that is coming can be on the top or on the bottom, depending on how the reaction happens. Formation of NADH can be monitored by UV spectrophotometry. We already know this. 
So we have done uh, problems related to NADH absorbance. Measure the change of absorbance at 340 nanometers. This means that NADH, the reduced form of NAD, has, an, has a strong absorbance at 340 nanometers, whereas NAD+, plus, which is the, the red colored uh, band here, does not have any absorbance. Both NADH and NAD plus have absorbance at 260 nanometers. So this property of NADH can be used to study enzymes like NAD-dependent NAD dehydrogenases. Another cofactor is flavine adenine dinucleotide, or FAD. And FAD allows for single electron transfers. And it permits the use of molecular oxygen as an ultimate electron acceptor. There are flavin-dependent oxidases, which can oxidize various substrates. Flavin cofactors are tightly bound to proteins, 